where we were like, no, I don't accept that outcome. And we pushed and we got it. Everybody has something like, and that's the formula. That's how you got to get it. But you got to recognize that because when a door slams, it's going to hurt. That door slamming on your face hurts. This is Unconditioning. Discovering the Voice Within. With Whitney Ann Jenkins. Hello and welcome to the 41st episode of Unconditioning, Discovering the Voice Within, where I bring on guests and we talk about the inner authentic voice and the challenges and the rewards that come from following it. This week I have with me Neo Positivity. Neo has a really interesting story. Neo started out in New Jersey as a police officer. He came across law of attraction techniques, applied them to his life, and he was able to retire from his career as a police officer to Florida and create his dream life and sharing this story and techniques with other people to empower them and show them how that they can take control of their own destiny. I had a really great time talking to Neo, diving deep into the law of attraction and how it connects with our authenticity and our inner voice. And this really needs no other introduction. You'll hear through the compelling conversation that we have. Here is Neo Positivity. Let's get rock and roll. That's how you get the, that's how you get the juicy, the good out of me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the first time that you realized that you had an inner voice of your own, an intuition, and it wasn't influenced by anyone around you or your environment, but you could really like recognize that it was your own voice um, and that it was purely you. I have to say that was at a very early age. I was, I, I was, uh, I was in situations growing up in the hood that required me to listen to that voice mm -hmm. um, and use my intuition to get out of situations because I was too inexperienced. You know, I didn't even know anything about the drug game or any of that um, or crime or robbery or anything. So I couldn't come up with solutions to get out. I had to use my intuition and it and it worked every time. So I was like, it was kind of a blind faith relationship that I had with it that I still maintain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you have anyone in your life to show you or guide you to live that way? Or is that something that you just innately had on your own? I'm going to say it's something I developed on my own. Um, it was, it was just me, my father and my sister, and he worked a lot. Um, you, he, he was a police officer in New Jersey and they weren't really allowed to take days off. Um, so yeah, it was me in the streets, you know, I learned day by day. Yeah. And so you have a really interesting uh, trajectory of your life journey. And in order to get to where you are now, a lot of things had to happen in between. So would you like to share a moment that was significant um, in that pivot for you? Uh, when I learned about the law of attraction, that was the most significant pivot in my entire life. Um, because it, for one, it, was, it, it didn't even seem like a pivot. I didn't know I was on a path. It was just life was happening. And it showed me this shift that I could make uh, to the rest of my life if I played by the rules and uh, and one of the rules being play by the rules often. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I learned quickly how to use the law of attraction and then it just became an explosion and started to work for me. I, I would just point at stuff and it would just literally come at me. And it's been that way every single day since the movie I saw The Secret. Um, I guess it's kind of weird because, you know, with the law of attraction, you're using it your whole life. So, uh, yes, I was using it before that, but this is the first time I was conscious of it and pointing it in a direction, you know, like a sniper rifle, as opposed to just throwing energy out into different flower pots. I like to consider it and, and watching what grows. Yeah. Was there a specific moment or occurrence that happened with the law of attraction for you that you were like, whoa, okay, this is really working for me. Yeah, I actually, right on the top of my door in the entryway to my office is, is this huge feather. Um, in the movie, The Secret, they ask you to think about a butterfly or a feather, whichever one you don't see a lot. And I always saw butterflies because, you know, where I was, they were all, we had cocoons and they would just be everywhere. It was beautiful. But I rarely ever saw feathers. 
I don't know why I just didn't. And the next day after seeing the movie, I went outside and I was going somewhere and it was this huge, like 12 inch feather, I'd say 12 or 13 inches. And it was just slightly tucked into the windshield wiper, just dangling to the point where I had to like run up and grab it before it, you know, flew on the floor. And I was just like, I did that. Like I materialized that. And I was like, wait, I didn't materialize it. Like it just appeared in my windshield wiper. But it's even better because you know what it took for that bird to be the, at the exact spot. And it's that feather to be disconnected just enough. Mm-hmm. And for the wind to take it, because it was always 13 mile an hour winds in Jersey. So for the wind to carry it to my windshield wiper and wow. hold it there long enough for me to get to it. That was, the, that was the point where I was like, I can do anything with this. And immediately... I set my sights on retirement. That second, I set my sights on retirement. And eight months later, I was retired. Wow. And you were a police officer, right? Camden City, New Jersey, yes. And were you able to use, um, you must have used your intuition within that job a lot, I would imagine. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Because I definitely wasn't the smartest cop. Um, We had some geniuses out there and in, in different areas. We had guys that had license plates memorized, um, which is crazy. But we had guys who were real good at, you know, um, doing drug lockups, where to hide, where to go, where to be at. You know, I, I was never the best in all of that, but I definitely followed my intuition. Um, I think better than everybody else because I ended up in a better situation, you know, than everybody else. And I tried to pull, I tried to bring them out, but it's hard to implement the law of attraction to. Um, certain people you just kind of got to set you can't force it on them you know you got to sit back and hope they come around yeah so going back a little bit um, what inspired you to join the police force was that something within your family or um how did it was it was crazy because it was it was a fallback plan it was a and when you think about it, it was an eighty-six thousand dollar a year full benefits pack, you know, pension package as a fallback plan. Um, wow. I never even thought about it like that before. But my initial plan was the NFL, which was millions. So this was obviously, you know, way, way, way less than that. So yeah, it was a fallback plan. NFL didn't work out. My dad was a sergeant. You know, a couple of my cousins were cops. My sister was a dispatcher, and he was just like, "Listen, you, you, you need benefits." You know, I was having my first child, my daughter. And he was like, you need benefits. You got to, you know, at least get, you know, join the police academy, get the benefits. So took the test, scored very high, went to the academy, absolutely killed it. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it all started. Okay. So you said that you retired eight months after um, that moment with the feather. And so what prompted you to do that? Did that just happen like step by step or did you make a decision that you were done with that career and you were well, ready for something else. I always knew that the nine to five wasn't for me. Like I, we, my first job at McDonald's, I was like, yo, this is not for me. And I know nobody, you know, everybody has <laughs> that moment where right? like, I don't want to work anymore, but this was different. This was not for me. You know, it was like, you know, driving a motorcycle. If you're terrified of them, you get on them and you're just like, Mm-mm, not doing that again. <laughs> and so Getting out of work obviously was was the number one priority and using the law of attraction, I can create my future. I was going to get out of any job I was, whatever job I was in, I was going to, like, that was going to be the last one. And it just so happened to be the police department. And I just obsessively tried different things. You know, I would watch videos and this celebrity would say that, or, or Oprah or Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, they would, they would say something about the law of attraction. And I started to really study everybody I could. And i began to come up with my own mental exercises based off of the best of everybody, scrapping the stuff that might not work and only work for her, but not for him. I kept the best and it started to uh, produce like crazy. And then the beginning of November, I came up with this exercise I call the watcher exercise. I think on November 2nd or 3rd and by the 28th was my last day of work. It was, it was and still remains one of my most powerful producers that I've come up with. Wow. Would you like to share that? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would I like, like to watch that. <laughs> I would like, I, I like to walk through the story, uh, give you a full detail of what happened, but I'll make it quick. I was taking this government test and I was in a room, small room, one table, one door, no windows. 
wasn't like cameras or microphone or anything like that. Um, so when I got done the test, I got up and when I was walking out, I kind of like tripped over the table. And when I stumbled, I kind of like looked over my shoulder and up and like smiled and I felt embarrassed that I had just like tripped in front of someone, something. But like I said, I'm in a room by myself. And I realized that that something that I felt saw me trip, I felt that watching essence before, like something was watching me. And so I started thinking, anybody could have this feeling. Everybody's felt like something was watching them before, but there wasn't anything. And I like to study things that everybody has in common, like no matter what country you go to, well, we all laugh. Right. You know? So I said, I'm going to study this. And I'm not on in line or picking up books. When I study things, I study in my mind. And so I sat back and I wanted to just feel that watching presence. And, and for anyone who says they don't know what I'm talking about, and I know a lot of people do say this, what I usually do in this situation is if I'm talking to somebody and they say, I don't know what you're talking about, watching, I don't feel anything. I say, hold on, don't move. And I go behind them and I set my phone on the bookshelf. And then I come back. And remember, they didn't see me do that. I come back and I say, okay, go ahead, finish talking. And as soon as they start talking, I say, wait, just so you know, my phone's behind you and we're live streaming, go ahead. And then they stop and they're like, you know, and then they, they kind of like almost turn around and that's when they can feel my phone recording the back of their head. Mm-hmm. And then I show them, my phone's not even on. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh man, and the feeling goes away. So that's the watcher feeling I'm talking about. So I wanted to study this feeling by having it. So I sat down and I felt the watcher watching me. I you know, pretended like a camera was watching, was filming me or whatever. And the first thing I noticed immediately was that that watching presence knew that I was watching it. It knew that I was planning to watch it. Not only that, it knew every thought I had ever thought. Like, I don't know how I knew. I just knew that this watching presence knew everything I was thinking. And I said to myself, watching me at all times, even when I'm not paying attention to it, watch me, knows all my thoughts. If I'm right, you know, this sounds like God. And if I'm right, this is the first time we as humans will be able to like interact and feel uh god and i was like man i could be onto something big and so what i did after that i started doing what i call compound exercises um mental exercises like visualization is exercise to compound that i'll go to the sun uh, the park with my son i'll put my toes in the sand and i'll close my eyes and visualize that i'm on a beach now I have the visualization plus a physical feeling of my toes in the sand. The sun is on my face. So I'm compounding exercises. So I take that exercise and I bring the watcher in. Now my toes are in the sand. I'm on the beach and the watcher is watching me enjoy being on the beach. Now you're, you're adding in an extra, an, an extra exercise. And so what I did was I added that to my retirement exercises I was doing, um, like holding a check you know, in my hand or something that says I'm retired, retirement letter or something in in the retirement, something that I would be doing had I been retired already. That's the key. You got to see it as though it's already happened, not like it's going to happen. So anything that would, that would, uh, you know, was a symbol of me being retired already, I would enjoy that thing with the watcher watching me. And that took it to the next level because I had been doing the same exercises for all eight months. It was just the last month where I added in the watcher exercise and it was done. After that, I went for custody of my kids. I'm still the only guy I know from Jersey who's ever been able to be custody of his kids. Um, got a Super Bowl ring, my pilot's license. I moved to Florida. It's it's just, I literally just been pointing at things, big things, small things. And I use the same type of formulas to get all of it. And then I throw a summit because since I learned the law of attraction, I just been interviewing one coach at a time, selfishly, because I want your techniques. I want everything you got. I can use it for myself. Right. Yeah. Um, but along the way, I would, you know, if I got something good that I would field test with my friends and family and made sure it worked with someone, no matter if you're male, female, tall, short, fat, skinny, whatever religion, it has to work with everybody. And once it does, I'll do a video on Facebook. So I've been doing that for 12 years. And last year I said, instead of interviewing one person at a time, let me throw a summit. We just have a bunch of people there all just exchanging ideas because me and you talk we're going to end up coming up with a new idea 
know, mm-hmm. we're gonna bounce ideas off each other. I call it a lovely, t- a beautiful tennis match. We're gonna bounce ideas off each other, like hitting the ball back and forth. But every now and then the balls will collide and a new idea will be birthed that we'll both be able to walk away from this, you know, meeting with. And imagine that with, you know, five, six people all yeah. shooting ideas at each other. And so that's when Neil Positivity's Thoughts Become Things Summit was born uh, last January. We just had our one year anniversary like two weeks ago. It's going strong every single time. There's more people involved, better ideas. And I just think it's a great thing, you know, to do in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> in your spare time. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so I've heard a lot of people talk about The Secret, actually, and how they say that it, it doesn't really work and it's not very effective because they're probably not doing it correctly and putting all of those compounded components together and so what is your interpretation of the secret of the secret um me doing those compound exercises just means i'm using the secret more defined and more accurately um everybody's using it whether they think so or not with every single thought that they have and the reason why they say it's not working is because when something bad happens, they say, I didn't manifest that car accident. I didn't manifest my grandma dying. Well, that's the thing. You might not have thought about that car accident, but you, you've been thinking about something that was causing you pain in your chest and agony over the past couple of weeks, months, days, whatever it is that led up to that. And as far as like your grandma dying, age is age. You knew it was coming. Every thought has a foundation like a, a, like a house mm-hmm. and you can paint the walls as pretty as you want and put nice furniture up. But if the foundation is crap, it's crap. If you're broke till next Friday, you could say, I'm rich, I'm rich all you want, but every single foundation is going to be a brokenness. And every time you think about your 97 year old grandma, you're going to remember that she's 97. So you are, that's the, one of the biggest parts of law of attraction is accepting that you are a result of your previous thoughts. That's Einstein right there. And once you get that true acceptance, then you start to own your stuff. Right. Once you start to own your stuff, when stuff happens, my son gets in trouble in school, I can sit back and think to myself, what did I do to manifest this in my life? Collective energy, he played a part. Everyone who knows my son and how he's messing up played a part because that's they're all watering that seed, I like to say. They're all giving off the energy of that. But what did I do to manifest that into my life? And it's simple. Every time somebody asks me about my son, my first words are, man, this boy. And I'm <laughs> sitting, so I'm basically setting this up. So I got to change the narrative. He's got to change the narrative. Everybody has to change the narrative in order to collectively, you know, improve the world. Right. You know, work on ourselves, work on the people around us. The people, the world is going to crap. It's getting worse. We got to change that up. And, yeah. And, and so when you identify like what happened in order for that to manifest, like something that occurred that you thought perhaps. Um, What is your process of going into that thought or moment or occurrence and transmuting it so that it's no longer a shadow? That is a very, very good detailed question um <laughs> and the reason why I, I say a detailed answer i mean it, the reason why i say that is because you you would have to in order to effectively do what you're saying mm-hmm. you're going to have to do a lot of mental work in changing how you see things because bad news is going to happen emails phone calls whatever and when it hits you if you see that subject differently you're going to filter it and feel differently about the bad news And so now you're talking about feeling your oneness with God or whoever you believe in, Um, acknowledging your ability to create your future and having confidence in that. So to to answer your question, how I deal with those situations, I start off by handing it back. It's a whole routine, I guess I go through, but I hand it back. When I get bad news, I look at it like, you know, somebody just handed me a piece of paper. Okay. All right. We'll handle it. I hand it right back to them. Handle that. And the crazy thing about that is that sounds very hard to do because it has to be taken care of. You know, somebody's got to handle it. You can't just imaginary hand it back to the universe. I promise you, try it. Your phone will ring five minutes from now and that problem will be solved and you didn't do anything. 
And yes, yeah, it's a huge problem. It's going to take more watering of seeds and, and more confidence in the law of attraction. But you get what I'm saying. It just works out that way. So when I go and hand that slip back, like the universe handed me bad news and I just hand it back in between now and when my phone rings, there's some things I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to see this situation as though it's fixed now. I'm going to have to also run a scenario on how to fix it, but run a scenario once and get out. Don't mm -hmm. dwell on it for the next 48 hours and tell everybody about your problem and how you plan on No, run your best. This is how I would fix it. If it went, if everything went to the crap, that's how I would fix it. Done. Now I'm going to spend all of my energy dollars. Every moment you're here, just think of God's giving you one energy dollar for every moment that you're here. What will you spend it on? Drama, pain and whatever you spend it on it will be arriving on your doorstep like a package from amazon so once you wake up from that moment you have to choose where to spend your energy dollars wisely and i suggest you spend them on that problem being solved in the easiest most smooth manner there is and then once you do that use that to strengthen your confidence and law of attraction and your ability to get through more problems so it's, it's a lot involved. Yeah. Um, but... yeah. Yeah. There's definitely an act of surrender within there to, oh, yeah. to, uh, to let go of, of wanting to solve the problem. What, what happens? Um, you say that you, you address the problem and how you would solve it, but what happens when you are unable to see a way in which to solve a problem? How would you address that? There's always a way. There's always a way. If you, if you can give me any problem right now, I, I could, I could, I could see. I could, all right, I'm sorry, let me back up. If you're talking about a way as far as the middleman, how you're going to get to the solution, skip that, cut that out. No matter how much you try to play God and determine what's going to happen to get you to the end result, you're going to be wrong at least by one small detail. So stop trying. End result. See the end result. However the problem came out, best case scenario ending, that is all you need to see. And then you ask yourself, how would it feel to have this done? How would it feel to be in this situation? How, and then just change up the narrative. And I love how would it feel to, that's a whole mental exercise in itself. Because if you say the problem solved, the problem solved, I'm so happy. And you're doing all these affirmations, the ego's going to step in and say, no, it's not. You haven't even made the phone call yet. But if you ask a question like, how would it feel to be taken care of? The ego has to step back and let the subconscious honestly answer the question. And it gives you a sense of, ah, oh, like, all right, it's taken care of. At that moment, you're watering a seed of it being taken care of mm -hmm. and pulling that future, that reality closer towards you. But the second you stop thinking about it being taken care of and you start worrying about it again, now you're pulling that reality closer towards you. Yeah. Have you ever had a scenario in which you were trying to law of attract something and there was a challenge that you met along the way of that, that was interfering, that you needed to keep the faith and work through that in order to get to the other side of it, to get to the manifestation? This is, I'm, I'm going to say one of my most famous quotes that I had developed early, early on. No matter what you ask for in life, you will be shown, if not proven, that you cannot have it. And how you respond to that emotionally determines if and when you get it. So doors are going to close on your face, some harder than others. If you want a cheeseburger, you'll meet a light obstacle. You want a million dollars, you're going to meet several huge obstacles, depending mm -hmm. on how you feel that million dollars is to obtain easier hard because remember it's the law of attraction if you think it's going to be easy it's going to be easy we see millionaires all the time making money out of nowhere but if you think it's going to be hard which most of us do because most of us have never been there despite all of our trying it's going to be hard so that plays a, a factor in it too but like i said no matter what you ask for doors will close and it's how you respond to that emotionally determines if you get it and when you get it so when a door closes if you go on facebook and cry to everybody oh my god my boss fired me <laughs> My husband, my husband broke up with me, whatever the situation is, if you go and cry about it, then you know what's going to happen. But we've all had something happen in our life where we were like, no, I don't accept that outcome. And we pushed 
and we got it. Everybody has something like, and that's the formula. That's how you got to get it. But you got to recognize that because when the door slams, it's going to hurt. That door slamming when your face hurts. <laughs> right. But you got to take it the right way. You, and don't let it linger. The more second, that initial shock, when that initial news hits you, that's everything. You got to catch it sooner than later. And that the brain is a muscle, has muscle memory. You have to condition your, main, your brain to catch it sooner than later through practice. If you don't get good at that, you're not going to be good at that. That's for one. It's like jogging. People think of it like a black belt. Once you're Zen, once you're enlightened, you're enlightened. No, it's not like a black belt. Once it's yours, it's yours. It's like jogging. If you stop doing it for a couple of weeks, you're going to suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a practice like everything else. Yeah. An exercise. Yeah, all of these. And speaking of exercises, if you're going to go to the gym and do two hours a day and work on your body, you need to do two hours a day working on your mind. If you went in the gym and did 10 curls on your right arm and walked out, how much healthier would you be? Not that much healthier. Yeah. So you can't do an affirmation, say, I love life 10 times a day and expect to be a millionaire by Wednesday. That's not how it works. 60 to 70 thoughts, 60 to 70,000 thoughts on average per day per person. And you want to make at least 51% of those positive just to have a positive day. That's a lot. That's a lot of waking up, too much waking up for one person. So you have to work on your autopiloted thoughts, the ones that are running in the background. Work on them. That way they work for you, watering seeds, the seeds that you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said that you've been at this for 12 years now. Over 13 plus. For 13 plus. Okay. And um, you're, you post videos on Facebook. So, so Facebook's an interesting place as far as... Uh, shock and reaction and uh taking things in and sort of not thinking about what you're taking in also so what are your thoughts of the collective <laughs> and uh how this is affecting us um as far as what your beliefs are i don't scroll down on facebook i post and get out sad i know it's sad but I know what I'm gonna see. Man, I know I have to expect better, I have to manifest better, but that's one thing I haven't been able to do. <laughs> so when I go on Facebook, I literally post and get out. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, you're gonna get caught in someone else's rabbit hole. Um, some people, I know a lot of law of attraction people who used to be real political, but they had to get out of that game because that mindset, because it was just drawing too much negativity. Those people are like, drug addicts or <laughs> or like get people with gambling problems because they'll scroll down and they can't help it they have to put that comment there right and then they comment and they leave it alone they turn it off and then they go to the bathroom they come back well my phone's got a notification and they open it oh no he did it and now they're in it emotionally they're talking about trump for the next six hours battling on facebook uh my father he has to remove himself from Facebook for weeks at a time just because of that. And it's it's sad. Um, the Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle calls it the pain body. There's a certain amount. We have a, a thing called a pain body inside of us, and it has an appetite. It needs to eat a certain amount every day. Yeah. And it will eat. It will find other people's pain bodies. They will feed off each other through an argument. It's like you ever had an argument that just stopped for no reason. You just were, you just were done with it. All of the arguments basically end like that. That means the pain body is done eating. You can't let it take you over. You put it on a diet. You starve it to where it doesn't have to eat that much every day. And you don't let it run your life. Yeah. You you were mentioning that uh, going to the gym for two hours needed to be equated with working on your mind for two hours. So what is your advice for making sure that people are able to fit that in to their life when they have all of these distractions of things like Facebook. Um, like how can Mentally. they integrate that? Set alarms and reminders. I've got over 40 alarms that go off throughout the day. I'm good at this and I still got those alarms just because days are just busy sometimes. But these reminders, they're to do like mental check-ins, mental exercises, but mental check-ins is a great exercise. It's basically just, what has my vibe been like today? And do I need to change it? That is a great 
mental exercise to do. Um, here's the thing about mental exercises. Remembering to remember to do them is the hardest part. Yeah. Days will go by where you just forget. That's the hardest part. If you can just get yourself to remember to wake up, that's when you make the choice of what I'm going to do. Okay, am I going to do an affirmation? What affirmation am I going to do? I struggle here because I ask myself, all right, what affirmation am I going to do? What do I want to improve in my life today? Oh, wait, I got to answer this email. And then I don't get it done. <laughs> so literally be, it becomes a thing to where I kind of screw myself. So just say yes 10 times. Or just say thank you 10 times. You're going to you're gonna find something amazing. By the third time you say it, you're smiling. By the sixth or seventh time you say it, your brain is throwing at your reasons to say yes. Yes. And that's what you want. You want to be in that headspace. You want to be sending that signal off. You want to be giving off that, that vibration so the universe gives you another reason to say yes in the future. So these are things you're going to have to do more often than not. The less you do them, it's like jogging. The less you do them, the more suckier you'll be at maintaining a positive mindset, the more you do it and the more your brain will cause you to do them. Everything is with this whole brain is a muscle. Uh, it has muscle memory thing. When a negative scenario kicks in and you catch it immediately, the more you do that, the better you get at doing it. The brain, your brain will do it for you. Yeah. And so all these things work together to develop this perfect mind where you're at bliss and peace throughout the day. And in order for you to be at bliss and peace, peace the universe has to make you okay financially it has to make your next meal secure and it has to make the people that you love and care about around you happy too because then that would make you sad right so this is what you do you do this you do these things and then the universe will respond accordingly what are your thoughts about mental health and issues like depression and how can someone use this, these techniques if they're in that state? I got called to um, basically a guy on a ledge jump type situation. And the first thing I said to him, I didn't even introduce myself. I just said, they haven't been nice to you, have they? And he was like, who? I said, your thoughts. And I had him. I had him from there. And then I told him, don't ever call me for this again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in that situation. Um, but yeah, I had him at that point. Um, it all goes back to muscle memory. Like I said, if you're depressed because your brain is throwing at you what it's used to throwing at you, you have to change what it's used to throwing at you. The same repetition that got those depression type thoughts, you're going to use that same repetition to get them out of your head. It's going to be tough at first. And you're going to have to meditate, learn how to meditate. I'll give you a quick cheat code. It took me 16 days to learn how to meditate. <laughs> I didn't get it till the 16th or the 15th or 16th day. I said, I'm so happy and thankful that I know how to meditate. I'm so happy and thankful that I'm good at meditating. I'm so happy and thankful that I enjoy meditating. So I used the law of attraction to manifest being able to meditate after 16 days of trying my butt off and failing. <laughs> I finally used the law of attraction. So that's my cheat code to everything. Um, I'm so happy and thankful that dot, dot, dot. Once you learn to meditate, though, you basically, you're quiet in your mind. People who are depressed, their brain is going. It's been going a mile a minute for their whole lives. They don't know how to stop it. They don't know how to shut it down. It's like shooting a BB gun at a freight train. In order to learn how to quiet your mind and stay in that quiet headspace and keep your thoughts at bay, you have to practice being in that quiet mind frame and keeping your thoughts at bay. So that's going to help subside the 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 you know your brain throwing at you all this stuff but then you have to condition it change the narrative and condition your brain to give you a different narrative and that comes with the, seeing the only way you're really going to be able to do that is seeing your situation differently because if your situation if your depressing situation isn't changing and you're trying to change your mind about it it's not going to work unless you see that situation differently yeah. and that's what you got to do work on seeing the situations differently that deals with being one with God, you know, I like to ask people, how much money do you have in imagination land? $10 million. I say, that's it? $100 million. That's it? A trillion dollars. And I'm like, couldn't you give a trillion dollars to everyone on a planet and still have not even tapped into your resources up here? And they're like, wow, I never thought about it like that. So you are unlimited over there. You can make anything you want. 
God could take your life right now, but he can't stop you from thinking about a red apple on the table. You have God-like control in the mental world, and that world dictates what's going to happen in this world. So what does that make you to this world? You know, and I to the physical world, I should say. Um, and, you know, I like to hit people with stuff like that just to strengthen their confidence in their ability to create their future. If I can get you to believe you're one with God, you know you're going to create your future. You wouldn't screw yourself. You wouldn't put yourself down a bad path. And so it's like stuff like that um, gives you the confidence to know that this situation I'm in right now is a result of my previous thoughts, like Einstein said. I know that I can shape my next thoughts. I know that my future depends on me staying positive. And that's key. I use fear to get people to do their mental exercises because if you know your negative thoughts are gonna screw you next week, you're gonna stop, you're gonna to try to stop having them. So it's a whole mental workaround. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy was really lucky to have you come along and um, sort of change his perspective of that moment in his thoughts. But there's a lot of uh, young people too, also who are scrolling through Instagram and comparing themselves. And so what are your thoughts about kind of jolting them out of that and changing their perspective? Oh man, comparison is a, a comparison is a beast because it's a feeling of lack. People think they're not good enough. They should do this, they should do that. I had to tell my son, my son wanted to be Justin Bieber a long time ago. And I said, you're never going to be Justin Bieber. Only Justin Bieber can be Justin Bieber, but you can be the best Antonio. Mm -hmm. And the best Antonio might be better than Justin Bieber if he works hard enough. So, you, you know, and then you see Justin Bieber in the news getting in trouble. His life's going, was going to crap back then. And you don't want that. Uh, same for like uh, I tell people uh, Chadwick Boseman, the guy who played Black Panther. Every black person I know would have given their right arm to be Chadwick Boseman. Well, now he's dead. Mm -hmm. Would you still have given your right arm to be him, knowing that he had less than a year less left on this earth to enjoy his success uh, with uh, with uh, the Avengers and all that other stuff? And so. When you can get someone to really appreciate who they are, I got several different methods. I do this thing with Play-Doh where I, I mold up two, I, I, I lay it out flat like a pancake, like a long pancake, and I kind of pull up two figures. I give them arms and legs, and I, and I say, all right, that's Dick and Jane, you know, like from the old books. And then I let them do their thing, and I say, you just created a whole scenario, you know? Are they brothers and sisters? Are they together? Do they, do they fight? You know, whatever, however you just saw those two people, you just gave them whole storylines and whole universes and jobs and all the other stuff. And then I smashed them back down and I'm like, <laughs> it was never two people. It was always just one. And that's us. We are all just, everything that exists is just one vibrating energy wave. You're vibrating at a different frequency where you're at than I am over here, but we are all one. So for me to want money, because money is just vibrating energy. For me to want money is for me to want something that doesn't exist for one because everything exists is just on this one wave. So I'm for me to want money is to, outside of me is for me to want something that doesn't exist and it's an unobtainable goal. And for me to want to be like someone outside of me, that person doesn't exist. So it's an unattainable, unobtainable goal. That person I'm looking at on Facebook that I want to be like, is, is the same as me. It is my essence, my life's essence being expressed in another part of the planet in another way. So it's, it's different, like I said, it's different workarounds, different ways of seeing things so that when you do get into a situation where you're envious of your neighbor and you look at yourself and you're like, okay, why am I being, what is it about this situation I'm upset with? Am I mad because he has the car or am I mad because I don't have that? What do I have to do to get that car? What would I have to do to get that car? What kind of person would I have to become to get that car? Am I willing to make those changes? Once you can condition your mind to go down that rabbit hole, as opposed to that depression, I want his car, screw him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's two different ways. Those are two different minds I just explained doing two different paths. And what I try to do is get people to go down the one path. And that path will lead you to questions. Once you ask questions in your mind like that, the universe, God, whatever you, whatever you believe in will answer those questions. What do I got to do to get that car? 
what kind of person would I have to become? Would I have to change jobs? Da, 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 da. And so it's a, it's, it's total mind makeover. It takes a while to do. It takes a lot of effort, but it yields the greatest reward, which is the ability to create your future. You know, it's definitely not easy. It's definitely controlling one's thoughts is the hardest, the hardest occupation a man could have, according to both science and religion. So it's definitely not easy, but it yields the best reward. Yeah. And your son is witnessing you as you are creating your life in this path. Is he following along with your ways or is he a little resistant? How, how is he accepting? Uh, I would say that uh, he's, he's said for me a, a bunch of times, he said to me that the law of attraction doesn't work for him. Mm -hmm. And it just kills me when people say that because it's working right now. You manifested it not working for you, quote unquote, because it still worked. But it's like if you let's say you wanted to manifest a cheeseburger, but you knew wholeheartedly the manifesting doesn't work. You're going to manifest that cheeseburger not coming to you. You get what you expect deep down inside. So unfortunately, um, he hasn't openly adapted the concept the way other family members have. However, I will say this. For the things that go right in his life, he's giving 100% credit to the law of attraction. You mm. know, I did that. I did yeah. that. Yeah. Confidence. So, and that's most people. Most people on the earth believe in the law of attraction halfway. They believe in it for the good stuff because I did that, but not for the bad stuff because I didn't do that. I haven't been watering that seed. So, you know, it's that, that's that 50 50. Um, so, and you can't, like I said, you can't force the law of attraction on people. They're just going to have to come around. All I can do is show him daily how I'm using it to my advantage mm -hmm. and hope that he, he, you know, decides to take on some of these exercises himself. Yeah, by example. Definitely. Well, I'm trying to teach the law of attraction to a three-year-old. Well, he's four now, but my three, he was three when I was really trying to implement it. Try to teach the law of attraction to someone who doesn't know what a thought is mm -hmm. can be difficult. You literally just, that's all you can do is lead by example. Mm -hmm. And then I can see him doing some of the things like when he, when he stubs his toe or falls or fails at something, he's trying to build Legos. I can see where he takes it in his mind. And I'm like, all right, now I know I've done that and I've done good. But if I do this, I'll produce better he'll produce better and then it's like it's like a little because i'm stay-at-home dad basically daddy daycare um so it's like i'm just studying him like i want to make him the perfect law of attraction machine i didn't know all this with my other two kids um so with him i'm just trying to i have an opportunity a unique opportunity to mold him yeah. into a law of attraction wielding beast and i'm on it yeah that's that's got to be interesting. I feel, how do you feel that um, we collectively are taking these concepts right now and using them either to our advantage or not to our advantage um, as far as the direction of everything going in the world at the moment? I'll take it back. I'll go back to Stone Ages with this. No, um, <laughs> the, the, the planet has been around for billions of years and it'll be around for billions of years after us. It will evict mankind before it allows us to destroy it. Mother nature has the power to do it and it will do it before it allows us to destroy it. Um, so as people, we've been doing bad for a while, <laughs> as far as trying to destroy the earth, uh, we're getting worse and worse at it. So I see the only way for us not to get evicted is through the opposite of the negative that we're doing to the planet, which is the positive. This is the way out. The law of attraction is the only way that mankind's gonna stay on this earth. Um, we're progressing. Uh, the universe gave us the mail system so that we can communicate effectively. Then it gave us the internet so we can communicate faster. And now it's giving us social media so we can communicate emotionally. All of this is leading up to the spreading of information, which was the mail system, the spreading of it fast, which was the internet, and the spreading of emotion with that information, which is social media. We've been going in very clear steps, and the next step is for us to transition into a different kind of person, a different kind of society, 
where mm -hmm. we're more positive. Even the negative people see their family members getting all the toys they want. They're going to try a law of attraction. It's going to work and they're going to shift. You're going to see a huge shift in the planet soon. And I'm ready for it. That's what I've been working towards. So I'm actually excited about <laughs> it. It, was, it seemed like it was years off before, but then I saw a couple things happening. You know, the law of attraction starting to spread. People starting to talk about it. There's summits that are happening. Uh, a lot of people I talk, like I wear this shirt. Um, this shirt says thoughts become things. I wear it everywhere I go. And the amount of people that come up to me and say, I love your shirt. Or my parents taught me that. It's a, it's, it's a great number of people and it's increasing every day. So I'm feeling yeah. very confident that the planet is adjusting and shows like this that are spreading awareness. Um, shout out, you know, to Whitney for doing all this for us. So definitely I'm hopeful and optimistic mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. There's, there's some good sign signs of hope coming. Yes. Yeah, definitely. But uh, you know, it all comes with, I have to, and you have to, and we all have to see the world getting better fast. Right. Because I was seeing it happen in, you know, 20, 30 years. I teach everything I know to my son and, you know, he becomes the next Messiah <laughs> or something like that. But now I'm like, yo, we could, this is, there's a turning point. There's a turning point. If my summit reached enough people, it would flip the country upside down. Right. Because they'd share it. And once they shared it, it would multiply and then multiply. And now, then you got, you know, like the Nene. One person does a nay nay, and it takes the freaking country by storm. We <laughs> couldn't do that. There's no other time in man's con mankind's history that we could do that. We've been given that, and we've got this gift of the law of attraction. It just seems to work. And the crazy thing is, people are into it. Spirit, I, put it this way when I came to Tampa, I didn't have any friends. I lived in Camden County, New Jersey, my whole life. Came to Tampa, didn't know anybody. So I went to all these networking events. Every single networking event I went to, out of 40 people, as soon as I walked in the room, four people stood out immediately. Her, him, her, and her just stood out. I didn't go talk to them at, you know, right away. I let the night progress. I went and I shook hands with everybody and I talked to everybody. But by the end of the night, us four were in the corner talking about the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. At every single event I went to, this happened. And I was like, that's something special. That's yeah. something special. So something like that, that's happening on the planet. It means something. Yeah, we're going to start operating more on an energetic vibrational level and be more aware of that, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's already happening, but we just need to increase a little. We need to turn the dial a little bit. Yeah. So if people would like to discover more about you and your work and your summits and all of that you offer the world so graciously, where can they find you? Neopositivity.com is uh, my main website. From there, you'll see the summit. You'll see all the Facebook, you know, all the tags. It's just Neopositivity. It, everything is just on the, land, on the homepage of my website. And uh, you get registered for the summit. Um, always have, I always love to have new speakers on, whether you're new to the law of attraction or a seasoned veteran. It doesn't matter. Your opinion is valued because you come in there, you share your experience. And then people are like, ah, oh, I remember when I was at that point. Try this. Mm -hmm. And then other rookies in the game here, you're going through the same thing. And they're like, all right, so it's not just me. There is an answer. So it, everyone's welcome. And it's a, it's just a great atmosphere. And it's, it's the third Saturday of every month from noon to 4 PM Eastern time. And what I love about it is when I'm done, I feel amazing. Everyone leaves that zoom call or wherever we do at StreamYard, And they just feel excited and amazed about the future and what they're going to do with their life. And that's the best part about it. Yeah. Excellent. So to wrap up, I usually ask one last question. And that is, if your inner authentic voice had a billboard, what would it say to the world? Thoughts become things. Stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> I got it's written on my wristband. I got posters. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, that one, that's that one was pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked that like 12 times this week and I can't find a better answer. I guess that's why I have it written on every shirt that I wear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you're listening and you like what you hear, please consider subscribing and rating this podcast as it really helps get this podcast out to other people who might be interested in hearing it but don't know about it yet. And also, if you'd like to contact me or reach me, you can reach me at unconditioningpodcast at gmail.com 
or Unconditioning Podcast on Instagram. Thank you so much. And until next time, stay tuned in to you.